Hi everyone, I'm talking today about bioprinted skin and its ability to form an epidermal barrier and to deposit extracellular matrix in full thickness wounds. The basis of my research is that when a large full thickness wound takes, takes place for a patient, either in the form of a full thickness burn or other form of a full thickness wound, a skin graft is taken from the patient and implanted onto the side of the wound. This can be very expensive, resulting ex in extended hospitalization, surgical skin grafting, and extended wound care. And ultimately, there's typically survival for the patient. However, there's adverse events, including scarring, contracture, loss of pigmentation, and loss of hair growth in the area that has been transplanted. Alternatively, um, a small piece of the, of the patient's skin graft can be taken at that initial time point isolated as cells and expanded in vitro, and then bioprinted to form additional skin, which can not only improve survival, but reduce scarring, contracture, allow for pigmentation and hair growth. So our central hypothesis is that a bioprinted skin will integrate when implanted into full thickness wounds and provide the essential functions of normal skin, which are barrier formation, vascularization, and collagen deposition. The bioprinted skin is biomimetic in structure. We try to form a hypodermis, dermis, and epidermis with preadipocytes in the hypodermis, fibroblast, dermal papillus cells, and endothelial cells in the dermis, and keratinocytes and melanocytes in the epidermis. The cells were isolated and characterized using immunocytochemistry to confirm their morphology and cellular identity and then bioprinted as shown in this video to form a trilayer structure. After bioprinting for our in vivo experiments, a large full thickness wound was created on the back of mice. These were 2.5 by 2.5 centimeters square. Um, and we implanted bioprinted skin or a control hydrogel or left the wounds open. We then treated all wounds with a bandaging technique and then allowed for healing to occur, we changed bandages every three to four days to allow for digital planimetry and imaging to take place. Here are a few representative images at key time points at day 0, 7, 14, and 21. And what we're looking for here is to see whether an epidermis is formed and if there's any open wounds that are still present in the, bio, in the mouse wounds. In the bioprinted skin, we see that the wound area has been completely resolved and there's complete closure of the wound area, whereas the control hydrogel and wound only group still have open wounds, which I've outlined here with uh, white dashes. To confirm this, we performed histology and using H&E standing, we're able to show that the bioprinted skin did have an epidermis shown in this red box, whereas the hydrogel only and wound only groups had open wounds without an epidermis forming. To further analyze the healing wounds, we use digital planimetry. Uh, what this does is we can measure the wound areas to measure total wound closure, epithelialization, as well as contraction. And what we saw is that total wound closure was improved in our bioprinted skin and epithelialization was the primary form of improved wound closure. To simplify this, green is good or epithelialization or coverage with an epidermis whereas yellow is still closure of the wound. However, this is due to contraction, which can lead to scarring. And then red is the open wound or areas where the wound is still open. And so what we see is the bioprinted skin has the most positive epithelialization, the least amount of contraction, and the completely closed wound area by day 14. We further characterized our bioprinted skin using pancytokeratin and human laminase C immunofluorescent staining. Pancytokeratin stains the epidermis, and what we see is that the bioprinted skin, again, has this epidermis that is formed and stratified by day 21, whereas the control hydrogel group had some positive staining in the epidermal region, um, but no complete closure or epidermal barrier. Human laminase C is a human-specific antibody, and what we see is in human skin, the epidermis and dermis are both positive, 
However, in the bioprinted skin, we only see positive humans standing in the dermis. And what this means is that we have human cells in the dermis, but our epidermis, our human epidermis has been replaced by mouse cells from the periphery. We also looked closely at vascularization, and we were able to show that the bioprinted skin had an increased number of vascular lumens compared to the control hydrogel and wound-only groups. When we zoom this in a little bit closer, you can see more clearly the vascular lumens forming. Next, we decided to assess the collagen deposition. We did this using picroserious red staining. And what we see is that human skin and mouse skin have a basket weave collagen matrix. What that means is that, is that there's this random orientation of fibers that form a basket weave um, throughout the extracellular matrix. Whereas in fibrosis and scarring, we see a different um, aspect. So in both our wound only and control only groups, we see that the collagen fibers are deeply aligned. Um, and in our bioprinted skin, we again see still slightly immature, but we see this random orientation of fibers. When we use computer modeling with a program called Curvaline and CT Fire, we're able to see this more clearly. So collagen fiber alignment was able to show that the mouse skin and the human skin have less alignment as well as the bioprinted skin, whereas the control and wound only, um, control hydrogel and wound only groups had more fiber alignment, which again relates with scarring and long term fibrosis. So, in summary, we have human cells that are present in our bioprinted skin treated wounds, but only in the dermis. The dermis has normal remodeling and we have vascularization occurring. So, what appears to be happening is we have our full thickness wound that's created, we implant our bioprinted skin. And there's ingrowth of prolifer proliferating mouse epidermal progenitor cells across the epidermal sc cellular scaffold that we have bioprinted. By day 21, this has been completely replaced, and human dermal cells have begun to lay down a normal basket weave collagen extracellular matrix. Ultimately, vascularization, which we see at day 21, should allow for long term survival of human cells in the dermis. Our next steps are to look at the day 42 and day 90 time points and assess what additional improvements we see. Perhaps we'll see improvement in epidermal remodeling, um, melanin produ production and pigmentation, and also we'll be looking for hair follicle formation. I'd like to thank my committee members, Dr. Atala and Dr. Soker, especially for their constant um, mentorship, as well as all others that have been involved in this project, uh, and also my funding sources, the NIH for my F30 fellowship, MTech uh, for funding, as well as the state of North Carolina. Thank you.